Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. You know, most days I work alone here in the shop, but occasionally I could use an extra hand. So today I thought I'd introduce you to my workshop helpers. They're great. They don't take lunch breaks and they work long hours without complaining. You'll meet them next, right here in the New Yankee Workshop. How many times have you found yourself in a situation like this? You're working with a piece of stock that's either too wide or too long to handle by yourself. You need another hand, and I mean that literally. Now over the years I've solved problems like this in a variety of ways, but the simplest is to use a roller stand. We have several of them here in the shop. This happens to be the simplest. I haven't fallen in love with any of them yet. This one has a small roller with a base that works like a tripod. It works pretty well, but I can't tell you how many times I've run the stock through the machine, bumped this before I got up on top of it, and knocked it over, making it totally useless. So I decided it was time to build our own roller stand. And here it is. I built it out of off-the-shelf materials that you can get at the home center and hardware store. There are four rollers instead of one, and they spin easily. It's actually PVC pipe a nice broad surface onto which to roll the stock. The base is equally wide, giving it stability. This one is not going to tip over. And if the floor is uneven, I have these leveling feet. Now it doesn't make sense to build a roller stand for just one tool. So if I slide this over to the table saw, first I'm going to check it for stability. And it's a little rocky, so we'll stabilize it. And now I need to lower it, so I'll unlock this nut, grab my homemade wrench, all made out of wood, and crank it down until it's even with the saw, and then lock it in place. Now, I made enough range in this up and down that not only can I use it at these two tools, but I can use it at my band saw, at my drill press, and at my radial arm saw. This is going to be a very useful workshop helper. And there's more. How about one of these? A mobile tool stand. A place to set up your benchtop tools, like this surface planer, or perhaps a small joiner, a chop saw, even a small drill press or a band saw. Now this one is made, again, of off-the-shelf materials. The top is 16 by 24, and it's about 30 inches high. But it could be expanded to any size. The key is to have the legs splay out to give the stand a lot of stability. Now I added this little storage tray because often benchtop tools have accessories that you need to have close by. Now for the mobile base, the casters are commercially available with the brackets and I use my own lumber to make one exactly the size that I want. So this will be another useful workshop helper, but there's one more. How about one of these? A stock cart. Now I've been meaning to build one of these for quite some time. It's a place to organize and keep track of parts as they come off of different machines. Let me show you what I mean. If I start at the table saw with a pile of raw stock and I'm running pieces through, sizing them, where do I put them? I don't want to mix them back with the stock I haven't run. I want to keep things organized. With this cart, I can slide them in a place where I know they're located and when I finish with the saw operation, I can simply move the whole cart to the next step, for instance, the joiner or the bandsaw. Now, it's pretty simple. A mobile base with casters, four posts, and some lightweight but very strong shelves. So if you'd like to build one or all of these workshop helpers, a measured drawing will be available with a materials list, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Now, I want to get started today building the roller stand. Let's start with the pedestal. This is an inner box and an outer box. And I want to start with the outer box first. You'll note that I do not have butt joints. I have rabbited joints. That gives me glue surface area to make the joint stronger. I'll rabbit the narrow sides as well as this cap that's going to go on the top. I've already cut my pieces to the correct width and length. But before we use any power tools, let's talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. 
Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. To make the rabbits, I've set up my stack dado head cutter and I've installed my sacrificial fence because part of the cutter is underneath that. Now I just have to run the edges. With all the rabbits made, I'm now ready to start some assembly. So I'll put some glue on the rabbit, line it up with one of the other sides, tack it in place with a couple brads, and make the final connection with screws. With the outer box complete, I can make the parts for the inner box. And here's the narrow piece. And when I slide it in, you can see that there's a little bit of play in there. I'm going to rabbit these like I did on the outer box, except I'm going to make the rabbit wider. And if you look at the prototype, you can see what that does. It pushes this wide side panel in about an eighth of an inch. That means that the outer box is going to ride on these edges, creating less friction and working more smoothly. the two boxes complete. You can slide the small one inside the big one and you can see that that rides smoothly and now you see the clearance. It's only going to ride on these edges. Now I'm going to cap off the outer box with this piece which has been rabbited on all four edges. It's going to sit right down inside but before I can install it I want to drill a hole for the threaded rod. For that I've set up a one and an eighth inch diameter Forstner bit to drill a through hole. Now we'll glue this to the top and secure it with some more screws. Take a look at the cap on the inner box of our pedestal. It's actually made up of two pieces. The first piece is rabbited all the way around the bottom edge and it has a 7 8 inch hole through it for the threaded rod and that's this layer right here. On top of that there's another piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and this one I've laid out the shape of the hexagon nut which is just going to sit in that cutout. To make the slot for the nut, I first drilled a one inch hole. Now using my jigsaw, I'll just clean it up. For the second part of the cap, some more glue. And this time I'm just going to use some brads. No need for screws. All the pressure is going to be down. Here's the outer box of the pedestal on the prototype. And you'll see there's a slot. And that's for a carriage bolt and this little knob that locks the pieces together. To make the slot, I'm going to use my router with a guide fence and a 3 8 inch spiral bit. I've marked the beginning and the end of the slot. Now all I have to do is route between the two. That 3 8 inch hole is for the carriage bolt. It's going to come through from the inside. I've drilled the hole flush to the bottom of this cap. That means I'm going to have to grind off one side of the carriage bolt and that will prevent it from spinning around when I tighten the knob. All right, now for the rod mechanism. I've got a 29 inch piece of 3 quarter inch threaded rod and I've just locked two nuts against each other. That way they can't move on the rod at all. Now I'm going to take a 3 quarter inch washer, slide that on, then a piece of 3 quarter inch electrical conduit, it's PVC, and that little piece of conduit will act as a bushing, keep the threads from rubbing up against the wood, push it through, 
another flat washer, and two more nuts that I'll lock against each other. Okay, those are tight. Now I'll take the nut that sits in the top of the inner pedestal and thread it onto the rod several inches so that it's way up inside. Now I'll slip it through the hole. And we'll slide it in until we see the hole for the carriage bolt, which is right there. Now for the carriage bolt that I've ground off one side. You've got to reach way in there, get around the three-quarter rod and push it through. Grab onto that, then take a fender washer and a five-star knob. And that's what will lock the two pieces together. Look down inside. Now I just want to make sure that the hex nut is engaged in the top of the pedestal, and it is. Now I want to start working on the base, and you'll note that it's not ordinary dimension lumber like 2x3 or 2x4. It's a lamination. I like using the laminated material because it's much more stable and it's actually stronger than dimension lumber. It starts out like this. They're called LVLs, laminated veneer lumber, used very frequently today in the building industry because of their strength. Now they cost more than dimension lumber, but I think it's worth it. And if you're close to a construction site, you might check in. They often have cutoffs that they're willing to give away. So what I'm going to do is rip some pieces about two and a quarter inches wide. Here I'm just rounding over the ends of the base to get rid of the sharp corners. Now I'm just rounding over the top edges of the long pieces with a quarter inch radius bit. If we look at the prototype, you can see that these short pieces have been notched out to wrap around the base. That'll lock the piece in. I also want to create notches where the small pieces meet the long ones. And I just want to check the fit. That's good. I'm drilling a 3 8 inch diameter hole an inch and a half deep in each end of the long pieces. And that's to receive a T-nut and this leveling foot. Now all the pieces for the base get glued and screwed together. Okay, let's set this aside and start working on the roller system. Now this hole in the middle of the platform allows clearance for the adjustment nut. Now I've removed one of the sides from the prototype so you can see what's going on. Here's the steel shaft, a 3 8 inch steel shaft that fits into these copper sleeves along the side. The sleeves are actually plumbing fittings for copper pipe. They're their exact match to the 3 8 inch diameter. I think before I leave tonight, I'll drill the holes for those sleeves. Well, good morning. You've caught me filing down a couple speed bumps that are in the middle of these couplings to center tubing. I don't want these in this application. I want the inside to be absolutely smooth. So with it filed, you just tap it in place with a block of wood. Here I'm cutting what amounts to some wooden nickels made out of MDF. Here's what they're for. I use them to center the steel rod in the PVC pipe, but not before I drill the hole out larger. Now I take the washer, get it started, the friction fit, drive it flush. Then I bought a bunch of these end caps, and they're meant to fit in this two inch PVC. I take a block of wood and drive 
to wash it down. Now it's just the right depth. Before I glue these end caps on, I have to drill a hole. Now I attach these end caps with a little PVC cement. The shaft for the rollers is a 3 8 inch steel rod. I cut the pieces to length. I bought them at the local home center or hardware store. All right, now I'm ready for some assembly. I'm gonna thread the shaft through one end, and then getting on the other end is a little tricky. You gotta move it around, and push it through like that. Then I like to spray a little lubricant on each end. And I bring it over to one side piece, which is already attached to the base, put a 3 8 inch washer on top of the copper sleeve, set it in place, put another washer on this end, and when all four rollers are in, I can attach the other side. And now the other side goes on, just line up each roller, and I'll attach it with screws, no glue, because if I have to make a repair, I want to be able to take it apart. and four screws attach it to the base. Let's build ourselves a wrench. Now here I have the various components. A one inch dowel for the handle. A piece of plywood which I've shaped and rounded over the edges for a arm. A piece of closet pole stock for an extension. And two pieces of three quarter inch plywood. One is a backer for this socket. I'm going to nail and glue these together, round over the edges, and then put it together. You'll note here that I've drilled a 7 8 inch hole about an eighth of an inch deep to give clearance for the shaft. Handle to arm. Arm to extension. And socket to the extension. And I've got to have a couple brackets to hang it on the pedestal. All right, that seems to work fine. Ready for plenty of use here in the workshop. Now let's build one of these. The most complicated part of this project are the legs because they splay in two directions. Now even though this leg appears to be square, if I take a sample piece that I had left over and I trace around it, you realize that it's actually a parallelogram. This side is parallel to this side, this one to this. And this angle right here is 93 degrees. So the first thing I want to do is rip the pieces with the table saw set three degrees from zero. Now if I lay that beveled edge against the fence, you can see the angle. With the blade in the same position, the other side will be parallel. Now to cut the legs at the correct angle and correct length, I'm using my chop saw. I've tipped it to 12 and a half degrees, and I've turned the bed to 12 and a half degrees, and I want the outside edge of the leg to be up and facing me. Slide it over. Make a cut. Slide it down to my stop, and cut it to length. I want to notch out each leg in two locations, down here for the stretchers and up here for the apron. And we'll do that at the radial arm saw. I've set up the stack dado, I've turned it to 12 and a half degrees, and I've set up a stop block to make the top notches. With the saw in the same position, I'll notch one side for the stretcher. I have a starting point marked on the table, which will be right there, and an end point with the stop block. Now I'm going to swing my radial arm saw to 12 and a half degrees on the other side of zero and repeat the process 
on the adjoining side of the leg. I've rounded the edges on each leg and I made this little jig so that I could drill a hole centered on the bottom of each piece for these levelers. And now a T-nut. And then I can thread in the leveler. Well now I'm ready for a little assembly and I've cut the top apron pieces rounded over the bottom edge of each piece with a quarter inch radius and bevel the top at 12 and a half degrees so that the top panel will sit with full bearing on it. The corners are mitered at 45 degrees, cut at 8 degrees, a compound cut. I'll locate them, brad them, and then secure them permanently with screws. And we put the rest of the pieces together with more glue and screws. The tray couldn't be easier. A couple cross pieces glued and screwed to the stretchers and a piece of quarter inch plywood stapled to the bottom. Now here's the top, three quarter inch MDF bullnosed on all four edges. Four screws here should be enough to secure the top because all the force is going to be down. There you go, one tool stand on a mobile base. This workshop helper is probably the most useful piece we're building today and it's the simplest to build. I've arranged all the components to build another one on the shelves and we're going to start with the base. As before, using the radial arm saw with the dado, I've half lapped the corners and will secure them with glue and screws. We'll cover the base frame with a piece of 5 8 inch plywood and staple that down. Now we need to make four of these lightweight frames out of three-quarter inch plywood assembled with glue and brads. Now we'll glue and staple a quarter inch skin of plywood on each side of the frame. Now I can attach the standards to the base and to the top shelf with glue and screws, making sure the unit is square. Okay, that secures all the shelves. How about some wheels? It takes care of the four casters. Hey, I told you, nothing to it. Well, here are three workshop helpers that are going to make my job a lot easier. And we'll be using them next time. Let me show you what we're going to build. Have you noticed how popular the game of poker is right now? It's on the internet. They have TV shows about it. It's in books, magazines, and even newspapers. And soon it's coming to the new Yankee workshop when we build this eight-sided poker table. You won't want to miss it. It's next time, right here in the New Yankee Workshop.